Last week, Republicans unveiled their 551-page-long tax bill. That's a, a big piece of legislation uh, that would have a dramatic effect on the economy of the sole economic superpower in the world. Uh, the Republicans are trying to pass their tax bill without holding any hearings on it. Uh, they unveiled it last week. They want to vote on it now, right away. With no debate, no hearings. The whole strategy is just to go fast and don't talk about it. And that, of course, is leading to expected criticism from expected quarters. This was the headline, for example, on the lead editorial in the New York Times today. The Senate is rushing to pass its tax bill because it stinks. But even though Republicans are, are trying to go very fast and they're not holding hearings and they're not holding any debate, even just in the past week since they unveiled this thing, that's been enough opportunity for the Congressional Budget Office, which is nonpartisan, and for some outside policy groups to uh, start doing the math on what it is that Republicans are proposing. When the CBO looked at it, for example, they found that the Republican bill will result in 13 million Americans being thrown off of health insurance altogether. Also, everybody who still has health insurance coverage will see their premiums spike because of the Republican tax bill. CBO analysis found that Rep the Republican plan will add $1.4 trillion to the deficit. Uh, in terms of who it helps and who it hurts, well, you know exactly who it helps, but it will actually represent a tax increase, an increase for most people at the lower end of the income spectrum. The smaller your income, the worse you will get hit by this bill. And for the middle class, this Republican bill will raise your taxes. It'll raise taxes on most middle class families. Now, no matter how fast you're trying to vote on this thing, those are bad numbers. That looks really bad. And Republicans like the idea of getting something passed, because they've passed no legislation since Trump has been president. But this, this thing they're getting passed, it is quite radically unpopular. People really hate it. And so the Republicans have been hoping that new, better, shinier numbers office that crunches the numbers on things like this. For tax bills, there's also something called the Joint Committee on Taxation. And we've been waiting to hear from them. And Republicans have been really hoping that they would put out their report on the bill and the Joint Committee on Taxation, th their report would be better. They wanted that committee to, to do their analysis in a way that would reflect the Republicans' greatest hopes, their, their greatest optimism about all the good things that might happen because of this tax bill. They should score it that way. Well, that report is now out. It does use the magic dynamic scoring that the Republicans were so excited about for this report. But it turns out, even with the magic dynamic scoring, the numbers are still terrible. Even these very optimistic, new, dynamically scored figures that are just out from the Joint Committee on Taxation, they still say what the Republicans are doing with this tax bill will add a trillion dollars to the death, to the debt. And, and the way you get to that terrible outcome of a new trillion dollars in debt is by transferring a ton of wealth from the middle class to people who are already the wealthiest people in the country. And it's just an uncomplicated transfer. Families making between 40 and $50,000 a year will pay $5.3 billion more in taxes. So people making over a million dollars a year can pay $5.8 million less in taxes. Why should people making 40 grand a year get a huge tax hike for any purpose, let alone for that purpose. So this is hard to sell. These are very bad numbers. Bad numbers that have come out since the Republicans' bill was first made public. And they have continued to come out right up through tonight when they wanted to be voting because they thought they'd get magic numbers that made it look good tonight. Uh, well, well, that was what we thought was going to happen over the course of today and into tonight until things went off the rails a little bit at the last minute. And here's what happened. Um, and what went wrong and how it has to, what it has to do with the, the, the Treasury Secretary. Fighting about numbers, fighting about math, is something that everybody in Washington has done a lot of. Usually what happens when one party's legislation gets really bad numbers like this, when the math comes out and just looks terrible, is that you, you know, try to make your own math. Try to come up with some different math. You take issue with the outside policy groups who have evaluated your legislation and you say, no, they're biased, they're dumb, don't pay attention to their numbers. You might even take issue with the bipartisan professional expert reports produced by the, the CBO and the Joint Committee on Taxation. You say, yeah, I know, those are supposedly bipartisan expert numbers, but those people are terrible. They do terrible work, too. Don't pay any attention to those numbers. I mean, usually when you want to fight a fight like this, you try to discredit 
the outside numbers, you try to discredit the bipartisan numbers, and then you come up with your own numbers. You say, sure, everybody else's math says this is going to be a terrible thing we're going to do to the country, but look, we have our own numbers from our own party. The administration has produced its own math, and their numbers make this look great. That's usually how this goes. That's the standard plot line for bad, stupid, uninformed, amathematical fights in Washington over financially ruinous proposed legislation. Like, we have a plot line for that. We know how it goes. And at one level, it seems pretty clear that Steven Mnuchin, our Treasury Secretary, it seems clear that he recognizes this is where he's supposed to come in. I think he knows this is the part where he's supposed to come out and say, don't worry, don't worry about those other numbers. I got really good numbers right here. We're running a lot of numbers. I think you've heard me talk about we believe in dynamic, not static scoring. I think that's something that's very important. We have over 100 people in the tax group in a modeling area, and uh, they're, they're working around the clock on running scenarios for us. Over 100 people in the tax group, the modeling area, working around the clock. That was Stephen Mnuchin, Treasury Secretary, speaking with CNBC. Uh, but this is a thing he says frequently. He says this over and over again. We're working on lots of details as to this. We have over 100 people in the Treasury that have been working on tax and scoring lots of different scenarios. Steven Mnuchin, Treasury Secretary, says he has over 100 people in the tax group and the modeling area. They're working around the clock on these scenarios, and they'll show that this tax bill actually pays for itself. It doesn't add a trillion dollars to the deficit. No, this thing's free. That's what he's been saying. Turns out that's not true. And I'm not taking issue with like what the numbers are here. I mean, it turns out when he says we've been working on this in the Treasury Department, nobody's actually been working on that in the Treasury Department. Uh, here's Alan Rappaport writing today in the New York Times. Quote, in pitching the $1.5 trillion tax overhaul, Stephen Mnuchin, the Treasury Secretary, has said repeatedly that the plan will pay for itself and that over 100 people in Treasury are working around the clock on running scenarios for us. However, quote, those inside Treasury's Office of Tax Policy which Mr. Mnuchin has credited with running these models, say they're not working on the type of analysis that he has mentioned. An economist at the Office of Tax Analysis who spoke on the condition of anonymity so as not to jeopardize his job tells the New York Times that Treasury hasn't released a dynamic analysis showing that the tax plan would be paid for with economic growth because, quote, one does not exist. They didn't do this work, he says they've been doing. And now this is a big problem for the Trump administration and for the Republican Party. Because all the outside groups and all the bipartisan groups are saying what the Republicans are doing with this tax thing is going to add a, a trillion dollars or a trillion and a half dollars to the deficit. To combat that deadly argument, the Republicans are supposed to be getting magic numbers from Steve Mnuchin that say, no, 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 everything's fine, it's free. He has been saying for months that he has more than 100 people working around the clock who are going to produce these magic numbers that say this is free, it doesn't add anything to the deficit. Turns out nobody has been working on these magic numbers. And it's not just an abstract problem. They have promised that they would get these, these, these magic numbers to specific Republican senators who are apparently counting on them. Quote, Senator Bob Corker, Republican of Tennessee, says Treasury Department officials told him last week he'd be provided a Treasury analysis before the full Senate considered the bill. Senator Corker now says that Treasury was unable to deliver on that promise. The numbers are not coming. They didn't do the work. The Treasury Department didn't even try to do this. The Trump administration never did any of the math. They never produced any analysis of what this tax thing would cost. Even though they said they were working on it, they didn't. And in addition to the political problem that creates for them, in addition to the wonderment that creates in us all, that they wanted to do a one and a half trillion dollar thing without ever doing the math on it. In addition to the wonderment problem and the political problem, this is also maybe creating a problem for Steven Mnuchin um, because the Inspector General of the Treasury Department has announced tonight that he has opened an inquiry into what happened here. What happened to the Treasury's supposed analysis of this tax plan? Now that we know that the dog ate that homework and those numbers aren't coming, and now that we've got the latest bipartisan analysis saying even in a best-case optimistic scenario, this thing will add a trillion dollars to the deficit, 
Now that all that happened tonight, Republicans got stopped in their tracks in what was otherwise looking like a plan to pass this thing tonight, rushing it through. Secretary Mnuchin appears to have screwed this up, and it appears there are no magic numbers that are coming to their rescue. This thing did get stopped in its tracks tonight. Will it stay stopped? Joining us now is Jared Bernstein. He's a senior fellow at the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities. He's the former chief economist and economic policy advisor to Vice President Joe Biden. Mr. Bernstein, it's nice to see you. Thank you for being here. My pleasure, Rachel. So it turns out that the Treasury Department just didn't do any analysis of what this bill would do. Um, that fact alone, is that weird? Uh, it is weird, uh, and uh, one of the reasons they didn't do it is because there are no magic numbers. What you just described in great and, I thought, compelling detail was a, a very simple reality that we already knew, anyone who's been paying attention, which is that trickle-down economics do not work, okay? If you're going to cut taxes by $1.5 trillion, especially if your motivation here is to transfer so much income from the middle and moderate income families to the top of the scale, uh, that's going to increase the deficit. And you can make all kinds of uh, assertions about how that's not the case, but every time we've tried it, every time other countries have tried it, that's been the result. And the staffers in the Office of Tax Analysis at Treasury are people with great integrity who really know this stuff, and there's no way they were going to gin up a kind of magic fairy dust trickle-down supply-side story that uh, Steven Mnuchin, or I, I like to call him Steve since he wants to be called Steven, um, <laughs> Uh, was, was trying to s sell on everyone. Well, I understand that you know the economic side of this stuff. You've also observed the politics of these kinds of fights closely over the years. Um, it does feel like Republican senators were actually expecting to get something from Treasury. And the Treasury Department, the Treasury Secretary has been saying this will be free, it will pay for itself. From your understanding of the politics here, are there actually Republicans in the Senate who will care enough about adding a trillion or a trillion and a half dollars to the deficit that it will make them vote no on this? To their credit, there are a couple of Republicans who are putting a bit of a bump in this process, a bit of a roadblock tonight, uh, because they don't like that one trillion added to the deficit. But the question is, is as follows. Will those Republicans accept a fig leaf kind of process for cover and then vote yes on the bill? And I got to tell you, I'm afraid that they will. Hmm. Uh, an another thing that went wrong tonight for them is that they had a process that they were going to use, a kind of a trigger mechanism by which if they didn't collect uh, the revenue that they needed to offset these deficit effects, uh, some uh, increases in taxes would automatically kick in. They would be triggered. Well, that was ruled to be something they couldn't do. Uh, and so that was taken out of, out of the picture. So now they're talking about other mechanisms uh, to uh, potentially raise taxes later if they don't get the revenues they want. I, for one, even if they get these mechanisms, first of all, they'll still be left with uh, not only a very sizable budget deficit, but as you suggested in your opening, a, a budget deficit that's motivated by just transferring a bunch of money to the one sector in the economy that's doing great, multinational corporations and, and the heirs of rich estates. But also, do you trust a future Congress to necessarily step in and raise the revenues they need to offset this? I mean, I think that's a pretty, a pretty tough bet to make. So I'm concerned that the supposed deficit uh, hawks are actually chicken hawks who will be easily bought off. Jared Bernstein, senior fellow at the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities, former chief economist and economic policy advisor to Vice President Biden. Uh, Jared, thanks, thanks for being here tonight. I know we're expecting that they're going to pick this back up and probably mid-morning tomorrow. Uh, we'll be watching to see what happens. Appreciate your time tonight. And my, my pleasure. Thank you. All right. Uh, we'll be right back. Um, I, I got to tell you, I, I mentioned at the top of the show that we just got um, a new report from The New York Times that is very provocative in terms of the president potentially being under scrutiny um, for obstructing justice in the Russia matter. The New York Times uh, has just published a very detailed report with a lot of named sources saying that the president pressured specific senators to end the congressional inquiry into Russia's involvement in the election. This is new news from The New York Times. We've got more on that straight ahead. Stay with us. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.